We're hurting for the players and their families more than any of us, the coaches. But my parents taught me, character is how you respond when things don't go your way. And how we're going to respond of getting gutted and devastated by this news is I remember feeling how bad we felt a year ago of being two games below 500 and all the work we put in. And I look at the year of absolutely everywhere we went, trying to get this fan base going, trying to get a roster in all this time to, to go plus 10. That there's going to be no, no less acceleration on our efforts for Oklahoma basketball. Raw emotional uh, press conference on uh, Tuesday for Porter Moser. You just heard him there uh, talking about the disappointment that comes with Oklahoma not making the NCAA tournament, Bob. We uh, did the Sooner Scoop uh, kind of hoops report type uh, recap on Monday. Welcome back to the Soonerscoop.com YouTube page. Eddie Radosovich, Bob Prisbillo here in Norman. And uh, just got done with about a 30-minute press conference with uh, Porter Moser. And I, I think it's pretty obvious he is not happy about Oklahoma being snubbed from the NCAA tournament. Not happy, and I think the biggest reason is doesn't know why. Yeah. You know, when you look at why certain teams get in, you hear all these different type of things apply to this team, but it doesn't apply to this one, and not understanding why and not knowing what to tell his team Sunday night. You can still, it is eating at him two days later. You know, I thought that the most interesting thing was as as much as the craziness, and we talked about the, the bid stealing that it went down over the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's probably about as crazy as conference tournament play has been in uh, the NCAA in, in recent memory. I don't think that it ever crossed their mind that they were going to be out uh, outside on the outside looking in of the NCAA tournament field. Yeah, he, he brought up something interesting. I'm not sure how much valid it, but like what it really means. But since December 1st, obviously this team had been a tournament team the entire time. Every time you did a bracketology, could have been a, a was a two seed initially when you know we kept dropping. There were six and seven, eight and nine, but never ever did they ever feel that they were close to even being out of it. And so to see that Sunday night, right around 5:30. Like the, you know, we've mentioned gut punch. We've used that term repeatedly in the last couple of days, but just talking about the tears, the anger, the frustration, and then Porter not having the answers. It just made for an incredibly emotionally night, but all on the wrong side of things. He also hit on uh, Tuesday afternoon, just kind of the idea and the decision not to play in the NIT. We both talked about it along with George on the uh, Sooner uh, Hoops report on Monday afternoon. It's completely understandable. And I think that the turnaround and having to basically find out that your heart's broken, you're not going to the NCAA tournament, and then get the group together, it was just too much to overcome. They weren't going to have enough players, I think, in a mental capacity to get back going as the NIT gets underway on Tuesday evening. Yeah, that did answer a, a lot of questions. It wasn't the health of Rivaldo Suarez, Javion McCollum, and John Hughley. It wasn't the fact that OU will be hosting the Big 12 women's gymnastics. That didn't play a role. What he mentioned was something I, I hadn't even really thought about. If you're a team like, let's just throw Iowa out there. Sure. They knew yeah. when they lost in the Big Ten tournament, NIT will come calling. You've got a couple days to mentally prepare, get ready, say, okay, we're going to accept a bid, we're going to play, and we're going to see where, where things go. OU basically, as he mentioned, had like a 15, 20-minute turnaround from just being kicked in the gut and now being asked, okay, now do you want to be a, a number one seed in this, in this tournament? And he mentions flat out, didn't think they had five to six guys who were all in at that moment and would have wanted to play. Yeah, and I, I completely get it. I, and, you know, personally, I don't give a damn if they play in the NIT. I don't think anybody wanted to come here and watch a game in the NIT, and especially with everything that came with uh, how the season ended and the, just the disappointment overall. Uh, here is Porter Moser talking about the disappointment as well as kind of the raw emotion that was in the room on Sunday night as Oklahoma uh, was left out of the NCAA tournament field. Okay, from December 1st, every single day since December 1st, our young guys woke up, right or wrong, and we look at a bracket, and Oklahoma was, Oklahoma was in a bracket. There wasn't a day from December 1st on. Now, if we lost a game, we might slide a seed. And as a coach, I know better to look at those things, because I know there's a lot left. But for young people, every single day from December, they're looking at a bracket, and they're in it. The first time since December 1st they looked up 
that they were not included was on the bracket reveal. You know, the, 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 it, was, it was very hard to talk to the team. They were, it, was, it was close to being inconsolable. Um, told them I loved them. I told them that sometimes in life we get things that are thrown at them that are unfair. The, it, 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 what just happened is not going to be the last time in their life that something is unfair to them. I told them that. I thanked them. Um, I didn't have a lot of answers because I didn't, I didn't have them. All I could just say is the raw emotion as their head coach is I loved them. Some things in life are unfair. And uh, I'm proud of, of, of those guys believing in what they did in the hardest conference in the country through different adversities of hurt. And nobody can take away from them that from the starting point last year, I told Losis, that the guys that were there from that, that group of guys to the point of where we competed and won to, to the extent we did and put ourselves in a position and we had some things out of their control. Sometimes life, there's things out of control. I told them that. It was a crazy Saturday. It was an insane Saturday. Um, and that's what I told them. That's certainly something that I don't think any coach prepares a speech for uh, and having to tell his team why they didn't make the NCAA tournament, especially like we've talked about, a team that uh, really felt like they had positioned themselves with the 20-win mark coming out of that Cincinnati game. The tone today much different than what it was. We talked about it a little bit yesterday, but I want to hit on it again today. Where does this thing go as Oklahoma goes into year number four with Porter Moser? I didn't even cross my mind today that he would be looking elsewhere or Oklahoma would be looking elsewhere as maybe some people had speculated online. It seems like uh, they move on now, and you've got to be able to get something together, whether it be retention of players, hitting the transfer portal. Year number four has to end in the NCAA tournament. It, it has to, and this needs to fuel you throughout the, you know, the summer and the fall. And like saying, I won't be two points away from making the tournament this time around. And it, it is interesting because I think there were people like, oh, surprise Porter Conference, is, there's some breaking news. No, Porter staying, OU is sticking with Porter, and now we'll see how many guys they can keep. Because technically, you know, there's only three that are leaving. So they've got 10 guys who could potentially come back. We all know that's not going to happen. There's going to be people that leave through the uh, portal, but they did such a great job last spring of identifying who's going to fit the type of system, not fighting the portal system, and now feeling more confident. You could hear in his voice, more confident about the NIL packages that OU has to offer. They believe in their heart of hearts. They're going to get this done through the portal, through retention, and they're going to finish the, finish the job next season. Really interesting story on on three today, just in terms of how much money you have to have if you really want to be able to field a NCAA tournament-like type team. Talking about uh, you know $150,000, $250,000 per player, and all of a sudden that adds up to a million dollars to really be a true player. It's going to be interesting to see how they navigate that, who comes back, the retention of some of these players. Specifically, the Caden Coopers of the world that really showed promise throughout a freshman season, as well as uh, Jacob Cole. And then, uh, you know, who are going to be the guys that return from this year's team, the major players? In terms of year number three, I know it's going to end in a disappointment for Oklahoma. And I know that there's not a lot of people that want to hear this, but it was a step in the right direction. Maybe that's a reflection on just how far this thing had fallen over the first two years. Yeah, and that's something Porter mentioned a lot. Was we were here last year, 15 and 17, and like, how are we going to get to where we want to go? And those guys who stuck with it have been able to see the transformation. I don't know if those same guys will be around again when we talk about next uh, next year's team, but they did do a lot of good things. And if they can retain some of those pieces, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's retention. That used to be a given in college basketball. It's obviously not. It's a year-to-year -year deal. If what those guys saw throughout the course of this season gives them belief in what Porter and that staff is doing, this team should absolutely come back a lot stronger going into the SEC. It's going to stick with a lot of people because I think at the end of the day, you can look at the metrics, you can look at uh, everything that unfolded over the course of the tournament weekend across the country. You're basically a game away from making the NCAA tournament. If you win a game against Tech, if you're able to hold on to the nine-point lead with eight minutes left, Texas, Kansas, you make four field goals in the second half, you're a game away from making the NCAA tournament. And that's, again, that's got to be the sticking point. That's got to be what drives you when you're, you know, as... What, what did OU do 
with uh, Texas, yeah. with Schmitty. They yeah. mentioned it. They mentioned it time and time again, the shutout loss. You need to have some type of rallying cry that everyone believes, understands, and it pushes people to go and to a point to where they've never gone before. It's a rough way to end the season. I'm sure that that is not a press conference that Porter Moser wanted to have. It's not a uh, press conference that Oklahoma fans wanted to be on the receiving end of. But Oklahoma season does come to an end on the outside looking into the NCAA tournament. First four getting underway on Tuesday, not uh, obviously uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Dayton with everything coming up on Thursday. Bob, we appreciate uh, all the work that you've done with the basketball season. I know that it doesn't end in the tournament uh, like I think a lot of people would have expected at the beginning of last week even or at the beginning of, or at the end of last week rather as they went into conference tournament play. If you want to watch the entirety of the Porter Moser press conference, you can find that on the Sooner Scoop editorial page. We will be right back here at some point. You know, we'll be able to talk about kind of the future of the program and what everything is going to come. Porter didn't want to talk about it too much today, so we'll see what that retention looks like. We'll see what the roster looks like over here over the next couple weeks. But for the final time, from the Lloyd Noble Center, Bob Persbillo, I'm Eddie Radosevich. We'll see you right back here on the Soonerscoop.com YouTube page. A little bit of an instant uh, reaction from Porter Moser's press conference today. We'll see you next time.